one of our most recent acquisitions is the Audubon Society's Game Warden Journals. So uh, we've got records of journals going back to around the turn of the century. They had several different areas where there was um, bird nesting activity going on that they wanted to protect. Yeah, this is that almost 300 page spoonbill study. The Special Collections Department at University of South Florida's Tampa Campus Library recently received documents providing a rare glimpse into early efforts to save wading bird populations throughout the state, dating back more than 100 years. By the turn of the century, it had become obvious that the, the bird colonies were, had been just decimated by the plume hunters. It was very fashionable in the late 1800s, the Victorian age, for women to have big, you know, ostentatious feathers in their hats. The state of Florida had limited resources to cover the vast land and natural habitat, and the nesting areas were extremely vulnerable to hunters working in the lucrative trade of plume feathers. Volunteers were deputized by the state and worked for the Audubon Society, patrolling three locations, Tavernier in the Florida Keys, Lake Okeechobee, and up the coast of southwest Florida to Green Key in Tampa Bay, all areas of bird nesting activity. Audubon provided something that the state couldn't really, which was, you know, very dedicated volunteers. The wardens took meticulous notes detailing the activity near the nesting areas. One Hudsonian curlew. They monitored the number of birds, any human disturbance, determining whether they were fishermen or poachers, and documented everything in the journals. Some records from 1901, 1903, um, a lot from the 30s and 40s, like this, um, ledger I have in front of me is from 1934. Um, fascinating, and I mean intricate details. You can see on uh, April 5th, 34, man and woman passed camp in a gray rowboat at 12 noon, said they were from Fort Myers. So these wardens are interviewing people to try to see what they're up to, make sure they're not poachers, make sure they're not uh, going to disrupt the environment. So things that are very detailed and uh, extremely important in, in documenting what was what was going on at the at the time. The daily observations recorded by the dedicated wardens encouraged stronger conservation efforts, allowing the populations to slowly return to the state. By oh the 20s or the 30s, the uh, the demand for these giant plumes started to dry up. Sometimes that that rebound can be agonizingly slow. Other times it, it happens more quickly, and people can see. But you know. From the whooping crane to the blue heron, uh, all these birds really have been saved on the, the backs of the, the Audubon wardens, their, their work. The Audubon Society donated the historical journals to USF for research and digital preservation. The ledgers are weathered after being stored for decades in a humid environment in the Florida Keys. Preservation by digitally scanning will provide permanence to the delicate journals. Ibis and Spoonbill are the ones I've seen the most often so far giving a glimpse into the heroic efforts that saved entire species of birds. The documents will be cataloged in a searchable database and available for people around the world to explore. Just what the Audubon did in the past is, is borderline miraculous when you consider all the things they were up against. The fact that they saved so many species and really in many ways saved Florida from itself <laughs> or from the people here is is remarkable in and of itself and that story hasn't fully been told